So I decided to create this video this morning after reading a bunch of articles about DUIs in regards to marijuana and the increase in drug driving charges and just reading the comments from people really got me to wanting to do a video because I just think there's so much misinformation out there about drug testing and people are then forming their opinions upon, upon drug driving laws and legalization of marijuana on just faulty information that they heard anecdotally from someone um, thinking that you know a joint that they smoked three weeks ago is going to get them a DUI charge if they were pulled over. So I just wanted to clarify a little bit upon drug detection time frames and just give a little bit of clarity. That way if you're forming your opinions on drug driving laws and on legalization of marijuana, at least you're forming it based upon actual facts, not just upon anecdotal opinion. So when we're looking at I guess the biggest misconception that everyone thinks is that marijuana is going to be detected in your system for about three weeks to a month. Um, now there is some truth to that, but it's not it's not cut and dry. You, there's a few different types of testing we're looking at. Um, there's urine drug testing, we can do a hair drug test, oral fluid drug test, blood drug test. So there's usually about four different types of drug testing, one of which has approximately a three week detection frame window for marijuana and that is going to be a urine drug test. Um, usually about three weeks. It's going to depend upon a few factors, body fat, um, you know, the amount of use, how frequent the use is, how long you've been using, but that's, I mean, that's a fair window to say about three weeks for marijuana on a year, typical urine drug test. However, when we are talking about roadside impairment and DUI charges, we are very rarely talking about urine drug testing. That's more on occupational realms. The testing that we're typically going to be talking about with roadside and drug impairment are going to come from either blood or oral fluid. And oral fluid is a byproduct of your blood, so it's very similar um, time frames for either of those two methods of testing. And with those, we're looking at recent use that is typically a 24-hour detection window for drug use. So if someone were to smoke a joint two, three weeks ago and then get tested and fail for an oral fluid or a blood test, it is not because of the joint that they smoked two or three weeks ago. It is because of something that they did in the most recent 24 hour period. Um, so I'm not going to call it and call it impairment because there's a lot of debate about what impairment is, but it is definitely recent use. So some states, um, I believe Colorado, for example, they've set cutoffs in place of five nanograms per milliliter, and that's what they're using as their cutoff. Um, maybe it's impairment, maybe not. Like I said, there's some debate, but we definitely are able to look at recent use for any of that. So when you're forming your opinions, keep in mind that if someone's being tested roadside, it is not testing for drug use for, you know, two weeks ago, three weeks ago, or even four or five days ago. It's testing for drug use in the past 24 hours. And then just to kind of go and show that there's even different forms, we can do something like a hair drug test, which is usually more for like a child custody or court order testing, where we're actually taking hair right from the crown of the head and taking about an inch and a half sample. So on that inch and a half sample, we're able to go back about 90 days. So once again, different form of drug testing, different use, different time frames. Um, someone like my hair, we could actually go back further, maybe even like a year and a half on, on my hair if we really wanted to. But just to say, it's not necessarily going to be three weeks. Every different form of drug testing has a different purpose and has different cutoff windows. So I just wanted to inform people on that. Um, know the facts before forming your opinions. And if you have questions, give me a call. Um, write me an email. My website is www.healthconservation.ca. I am based in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. And you can get my contact information off of the website. Give me a call. Give me an email. I am happy to answer any questions you have about um, marijuana detection, about drug testing, not just marijuana, but other forms of drug testing. We're doing lots of things like fentanyl right now and just some of the other forms. But shoot me a line, and I would be more than happy to answer any questions you have. Thank you.